This video right here just hit a million views on TikTok. It's currently helping millions of people to save money and not get ripped off by car dealerships when buying a car. I'm gonna take you through some of those tips that I shared in this video, as well as 10 hidden fees that you should never pay when buying a car from a car dealership, whether it be new or a used car. So we're gonna talk about that today. While we're at it, we're also gonna go for a ride in the S4, 2022 Audi S4 here, and we're gonna get it washed. So it looks like I did something productive today, all right? Grab a call if you hang around, let's get into it. First couple tips that I'm gonna give you if you're buying a car, this is probably the biggest tip, probably the best tip. You can think about all the other things after the fact, but the number one thing that I would say that's actually pretty simplistic and easy to remember if you do it well and you do it right and use the right online platforms is I would always, before you go to the dealership, go onto an online platform. I use AutoTrader, I'm gonna tell you what I do. I use AutoTrader, I just like AutoTrader. You can filter everything exactly to how you want. But then once you know what you wanna buy, go to AutoTrader, reach out to these dealerships via email. Don't call them, don't go to the lot, don't go test drive for fun. Reach out to the dealerships via email and tell them what you want and ask them what their best price on the vehicle that you're looking for is. So right now I'm considering buying a Ford Raptor. So I'm looking at Ford Raptors in the 70s that dealers have listed. I, I searched the Raptors in the area and I use the filter function to filter by the Raptors that are priced the lowest because the way I see it is these dealerships are already in a better position for me to negotiate with. And it's a new car, so I don't really care about mileage or anything like that, or use, because it's not used. So I filter by the cheapest one that I wanna get. Um, understanding the options might be a little bit different, but I try to get the best price. So I, I start there, and then I reach out and go back and forth via email a couple times. The dealerships are gonna say they can't do this, they can't do that. Get them to send you a proposal that you're happy with before you go to the dealership. So you'll say, hey, I want to buy this car for, you know, it's listed at 77,000 would you be willing to take 75 or something like that? And they'll probably say no at first. And you say, okay, well, you know, that's fine. But push a little harder and they'll either get you to, you know, send a proposal that has at least the vehicle at MSRP or slightly below. That's always really your goal. If you can get something in today's marketplace, if it's a sought after vehicle, MSRP is a good place to start. And sometimes look on Reddit, see if people are buying them at slight discounts. But that's what I would say, negotiate online. There's no secret to negotiating their dealerships. If they don't give you what you want, you go to the next dealership down the road. There's plenty of dealerships all over the place. You don't have to like do business with just one dealership. So be willing to walk away while you're doing this. So once you have your set upon price in your proposal, you're good to go. Now, the rest of this video, I wanna spend some time focusing on these 10 hidden fees that will sometimes be in these proposals that you need to weed out. But at the end of the day, when you look at a proposal, you should really just have the MSRP or whatever it is of the vehicle, there will be like a delivery fee or whatever that is, which is baked into the MSRP of the vehicle. And then after that, you'll have taxes, tags, registration. If there's anything else on that invoice, and I mean anything else on that invoice, like whatever it is, these are things that you wanna look out for. So now let's start driving. We're gonna talk about these 10 specific fees, these hidden fees that you should look out for when you're negotiating the price of your vehicle. So let's go. And I pulled these from my own invoices. I was buying cars. I pulled these off of dealer invoices or dealer proposals from car dealerships with which I did not end up working with. I, I ultimately like declined working with these dealerships because these fees were so ridiculous. Um, so let's kick it off. Number one in the video was nitrogen tire fill. Nitrogen tire fill was on one of my proposals from a Toyota dealership for $95, I believe. And that's ridiculous because I've learned this on TikTok. I think air is like 70 something percent nitrogen anyway. So it's kind of ridiculous. I think nitrogen fill might be cool, but for $95, it's not worth $95. Again, some of these fees that we'll go through are dealer fees that they might be fine products. It's more just the pricing and the quality of the ones that you're getting from the dealership are probably not as good as they could be. So nitrogen tire fill, number one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it if you see it on your invoice for your proposal for you know $95 or whatever it might be. I would completely ignore that and tell the dealer to take it off. A lot of times they will, and that goes for all of these fees. The next big one that you'll see, again, Toyota was guilty of this, uh, Resistall. So Resistall is, I think, something they spray on the seats. It's like basically Scotch Guard or whatever. You know, it was on my invoice and my proposal for five hundred and ninety-five dollars. Five hundred and ninety-five dollars. You know what I can buy with five hundred ninety-five? I could buy a new seat in my Toyota Rav4 for five ninety-five. I bet you. Let's move on to number three. Number three was window tint. Now this was a super controversial one on TikTok. Window tint 
uh, you know, seem to be something that everybody said, oh, window tint's great, you should have window tint in your car. I completely agree. I tint every single one of my cars. Now, let me explain the issue that I have with the dealership putting window tint on my uh, proposal for $295. The dealership put that on the pros for 295, and the problem I have is that the dealer is only tinting two of your windows. The dealership doesn't put darker tint on all five of your windows because you got to remember from the factory, your rear windows are, um, you know, already tinted. They come pre-tinted. They have a, a nicer tint embedded in the glass of the window from the factory. So the dealer charging 295 to just tint your two front windows is robbery. Independent shops will charge you $100 to tint two windows. Now, if you want to get all five done, an independent shop might charge you $300 for ceramic tint and, you know, a perfect tint job as well. It's like got perfect lines on the windows and things like that. These dealership tint jobs are one, not that good, and two, they're using the cheapest tint possible. I know because I've already scratched it off my Toyota RAV4 that I bought not that long ago. It's not nice ceramic tint. It doesn't keep the car that cool. It's just not that good. It's not worth it. So it was just an overpriced item. If your dealership claims to do ceramic tint and they do a good job, maybe pay $150, $200 to just get it done right, right off the jump so you don't have to drive to an independent shop to get your car uh, tinted. So, all right, moving on to number four. Number four on this list of hidden fees is something called Apex Protection. Now, I did a little research on Apex Protection because I didn't even know what it was when I saw it on my invoice. It looks like a combination of a warranty. They'll do, you know, rental car reimbursement, um, you know, fix things on your car when they break, like basically just an extended warranty, branded extended warranty that offers a few extra things. Again, never, never pay for a third party extended warranty, especially if it's a new vehicle. If it's a new vehicle, what you want to do is you, if you want to get an extended warranty, that's fine, but buy it, buy the manufacturer extended warranty. If you go through BMW, buy the BMW like wheel and tire protection, whatever it is, don't buy the third party. It's always harder to work with. You're always going to like, you're doing yourself a favor, just go to the manufacturer's warranty they're always the easiest to work with because they actually have a reputation to care for. Whereas like these independent, you know, warranty companies really don't have much to worry about. Apex protection was also super expensive on my list. It was listed at $950. They had it on my proposal for 950. I was like nine fit. I mean, that is insane. Side note though, this is a side tip for you here. I'm gonna open this up to get better lighting. A side tip for you here though, if you do get a warranty, as I mentioned, I would recommend buying the dealer warranties. If you do get a, an extended dealer warranty for something that seems like a good deal for whatever your use case is, which they can be sometimes, what I would recommend is if you end up not using it or you sell your car, don't forget that you can actually cancel those warranties in the dealerships. The finance department will tell you this, they'll send you a check for the remaining balance of your warranties. So if the warranty is like a two or three year, you know, warranty, um, in that three years, if you're only owning the car for like a year, you can prorate the last two years back to yourself when you sell the car. And I've done this on multiple vehicles. They'll send you a check for $900 or whatever it is. So keep that in mind if you buy extended warranties. That's a bonus tip. All right, another thing that, I, that happens a lot is uh, there's a dealership down here in Atlanta. A lot of these uh, Toyota dealerships are notorious for this. They throw on like lifetime warranties, lifetime powertrain warranties. And I, my, the, the number five was dealer benefits. They put it as dealer benefits a lot of times in your proposal. Um, they put like added warranties, like free car washes or, uh, you know, unlimited powertrain warranty. And like, these can be good things and all that. I'm not saying they're not good things, but they listed it on my proposal at $19.95, $2,000 added on top of my proposal. Now you gotta remember you're buying like a Toyota in my instance, in this, in this use kit, in this instance here, I was buying a Toyota that has a 60,000 mile powertrain warranty already on it and they're super reliable cars anyway. So it's rare that something's gonna break that's gonna cost me, you know, $2,000 to have to fix. So with that, I would say never pay for these. You can always talk them down and I did talk them down on my uh, RAV4 purchase. They wanted 1995. I talked those guys down to I think 700 as the lowest I could get them. I really wanted the car at the time and I was like, all right, I just gotta do it. 700 bucks is lifetime powertrain warranty, free car washes, things like that. I, but I wouldn't recommend paying for this. I wouldn't do it again. It's not worth it because where you also get hit is in your resale value. Some of those are not reimbursable and it doesn't improve your resale value at all. The next one on the list was anti-theft devices. So any kind of anti-theft device in your car, you don't need that. That's what you got insurance for. It's not gonna help you out. Don't pay extra for an anti-theft device. It's just a stupid thing to buy in your car. If you have a $200,000 Lamborghini that you're worried about or something like maybe, but it's ridiculous. You're not gonna need to worry about that. And what are the odds your car is gonna get stolen? And if it does get stolen, just call your insurance company. Like you'll work it out. It's not gonna be great no matter what. The next one on the list was wheel locks. Wheel locks is another thing that you'll commonly see on your proposal. Wheel locks, typically like a lot of cars you buy have wheel locks, first of all. Second of all, 
are your wheels really going to get stolen? I mean, what are you driving? Do, do people really want to steal your RAV4 wheels? I mean, if you look, if you live in a really rough area, you can buy wheel locks cheaper and you need wheel locks, that's fine. But no one's stealing the wheel. I've, I've had a lot of cars. No one's ever tried to steal my wheels. I've never had super expensive wheels. They're just regular stock wheels on a car. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And $200 is certainly ridiculous to charge. Um, another one that was on there was door edge protectant. Now this is something that could be cool, but if you want to do it, just do it yourself. It's super cheap. Buy it for 20 bucks. It's a little piece of tape that goes on the door. So if you bang your door getting out of it, like, you know, you have a little protectant on the edge of your door. I don't really think I'm worried about a tiny little paint chip, but if you are, you know, one, be careful with your doors. Two, if you want to do it, just slap it on there yourself. They charge $300 on my proposal for door edge protectant. I was like, that's crazy. Another big one on, on the list, number nine on the list, was a general market adjustment. So a lot of times, and this happened a lot during COVID, Toyotas and highly sought after vehicles, uh, dealerships were slapping market adjustments on because there were supply constraints. People couldn't get the vehicles they wanted. It's a shame people were paying these, but the market adjustment that I got on a dealership down here in Georgia, and again, the Southeast is just like rough for car dealerships apparently. Uh, but the market adjustment was $3,000 on a RAV4. I was like, $3,000? That's like almost 10% of the freaking vehicle price. So yeah, watch things like that. Any market adjustment, just obviously just say no. Go somewhere else. You just expand your search and drive a little bit. Buy a plane ticket and fly to get the vehicle you want if you have to. Don't pay a market adjustment. It's just ridiculous. Unless you have the money, but you know, I wouldn't do it. Um, and the last and final thing on the list that, uh, that went viral on TikTok was a screen protector. So I saw a dealership that sent me a proposal, it's the same dealership that tried to get the market adjustment in there also had an adjustment for a screen protector, $300 for a screen protector. I can buy a screen protector on Amazon for like $20. So no, I don't think you should buy a $300 screen protector installed from the dealership. It's not better. It's not going to help you. And to be honest, who cares? You don't need it. You're not going to scratch your screen in your car unless you have like, you know, your dog jumping all over the front or your kids are crazy which, you know, I get that could, that could be a thing, but buy a screen protector on Amazon. If you want it, do not pay $300 from a dealership. So that was the 10th and final uh, tip that I had. And again, the last bonus tip that I'll leave you with guys, before we go get this thing washed is again, remember a lot of these things are reimbursable or, you know, back to you if you sell the car. So this happens to me a lot where I'll buy, like I, I do buy wheel and tire protection sometimes for cars when I buy them. And uh, you know, it's usually a thousand dollars or something like that. If I buy like a sports car, cause the wheels can be expensive um, wheel and tire protection. And then when I sell the car, I will prorate it back to myself. And, uh, you know, I'll get a check in the mail. So don't forget that you can do that. That's the biggest tip that I'll, uh, the last and final tip that I'll leave you with. But all right, let's go get this S4 washed and uh, get her cleaned up. Cause somehow I got some like Georgia clay on the outside of my window here. I think my kid threw a bunch of mud on the car, speaking of kids. So, all right, let's do it. Well, that's it. Thanks for rocking with me. Hope that was helpful. And if you like videos like this and car videos, please subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you. It helps me out to make more videos. So click that subscribe button, give this video a like, share it with your friend, your mom, your brother, your sister. I don't really care, but I'd appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.